for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. I'm in Chicago tonight, coming to you from uh, our affiliate Q one hundred and one out here in Chicago. Ooh, Vic must be there with you. Yes. Trusty engineer Vic is uh, here holding down the fort. I was uh, in Chicago this week doing this, uh, actually this weekend doing this celebrity all-star legends softball game, which was uh, a lot of fun. We did it tonight. And uh, Drew's uh, back in L.A. sweltering in the miserable heat. Mm-hmm. You're here. Mm-hmm. You're here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a lot louder than you are, Drew. Is that how it always is? Um, to me, you're a lot louder. Yeah, you're a little louder than I am. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it always is. All right. I think Vic's going to uh, adjust that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we had a good time today. We went. Uh, I'll tell you, if you guys ever get a chance to play a softball game on a uh, major league uh, ballpark diamond uh, at well, who night does with it? the lights on. Come on, who does it? 25,000 people there. I, I highly recommend it. It's a wow. good time. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's on, uh, by the way, and I mean, uh, this the the uh, baseball all stars were like uh, Willie McCovey and uh, Fred Lynn and Dave Winfield, Nazi Smith and Bo Jackson. Wow. I mean, it was like uh, crazy uh, who's who of uh, baseball celebrities. I mean, uh, you know, probably had six or seven Raleigh Fingers was there. Oh, yeah. Like uh, six or seven uh, Hall of Famers in the group. Wow. And uh, you know the thing, uh, a couple of things struck me about these guys. Uh, first off, they're all still in, in really solid shape. Huh. I mean, they, they can play, you know, they're, they weren't fat. They all looked uh, sort of well-rested and tanned, and uh, they all look good. They aren't that old. They're in their 50s, right? Well, some of them, I mean, some, some of the of guys, some of the guys, if, uh, I mean, there's guys like Bo Jackson are probably 30. 30, 36, you know. Yeah. It's still, uh, saw him nude, by the way. No, that's not uh, how was it? Uh, it was it was a delight for the, uh, for the eyes and the nose. <laughs> no, I mean the guy's built like a brick f house. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say s house, but that that wasn't enough. Yeah. And then guys like Dave Winfield, Dave Winfield uh, played uh, outfield for the Yankees for quite a number of years. Uh, Dave Winfield's about six six, about uh, two seventy. Wow. And it, man, you know Dave Winfield is the only guy to ever get drafted professionally for football, baseball, and basketball. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. You, like, uh, how it's would unfair. you like that? I know. I mean, he got professionally drafted in all three major sports. Did he play and, uh, anything besides, besides baseball? Uh, no, he just chose to play baseball, I guess. But it, that was sort of back in the day where you picked uh, your sport and you kind of stuck with it. And I guess it's smart because, you know, you, you end up doing what Bo Jackson did, which is you, you blow your hip out playing uh, professional football, and that's it. But uh, it was a gas. I mean, uh, it, just all the lights on, the field all lit up, and everybody uh, out there was a beautiful, beautifully groomed field and uh, had a good time. Robbed a guy of a home run. Ooh. Uh, over the fence. Wow. The ball would have gone out of the park. And you jumped up a, and got it. Brian McKnight hit it. Oh, my God. Yeah, he hit about 200 and change. The Brian ball was McKnight. going that uh, ball. Yeah, he's a big guy, He is Brian a big McKnight. guy. Yeah, he is a big guy. Oh, yeah. big whoop. Nice ball guy. Was, uh, ball was going out of the park. Yeah. Anyway, if you want to see this uh, game, it's on uh, ESPN tomorrow night after the uh, home run derby. All right, fair enough. And uh, lots of hijinks with uh, Big A and Kimmel in there, too. So uh, good times. All right, Drew. Yeah. What are we doing? We're going to take some calls. Here is, uh, uh, hold on here. I want to take uh, Stanley, who's 22. Stanley. Uh, hi, what's up? Well, hey. You tell us. Uh... Well, I've heard you guys talk a lot about tattoos and piercings and uh, how people are sometimes kind of messed up when they want to get lots of piercings and tattoos. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, now, my spin on it is that I don't really want any piercings or tattoos, but I find myself attracted to people with piercings and tattoos. We had this call a couple of weeks ago, and Adam, both you and I realized we thought that we'd never talked to, spoken to anybody who was attracted to the tattoos and piercings. You know what I mean? Not really. Yeah, I mean, we 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 thought we talked to people that were kind of effed up, had tons of piercings and tats themselves, and were attracted to other circus mm -hmm. freaks. Right. But we 
but not anyone who's completely clean and into it, unless that just means somehow that uh, they're open for business. You know what I mean? Huh, Stanley? Uh, well, yeah. I'm, I mean, I w- that's the same thing I was thinking. I was thinking I'd heard a million times how other people were into doing it to themselves, but never a call from someone who was... No, no, no. Adam was asking uh, whether or not... No, Stan, Stan's thinking about something else. Yeah. Oh, well, listen, Stan, so what? Uh, good. Enjoy. Okay, there we go. All right. You find someone with a nice uh, tongue stud, get some uh, hellacious oral. <laughs> it's all good. Stanley really didn't have a question. Did it didn't he? seem like it. Didn't it's seem a kind like of it. kind of a half a statement, yeah. and he was distracted. Yeah, it's Lauren, fifteen. Lauren. Uh, hi. What's hey. Up. Uh, nothing. Um, I just I have like these uh death and blood fetishes, and I was just wondering how how someone would get those or. Well, you know. specifically, what are you talking about? What happens? Uh, it's like just like seeing blood or tasting it or blood injury. It just. Getting hot, you know? Blood injury. How's that go? You know, it's like you get an injury, like a cut or something, and you bleed. Right, but so so you're saying even if it's if it's not self-induced, if if you were driving down the street and a guy got in a motorcycle accident, he was there by the side of the road bleeding. Would that be exciting to you? Yeah. No. It would be. No. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say no, Drew? Oh well, yeah, it, it, it sounds bogus. Yeah. No, it's not bogus. All right, well, what's up with you? Did you get beaten or something? No, I don't know what. All right. Well, yeah, I'm do, sure do I think you, we're off to like a full moon. Right, right, oh, it is way. full moon, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hence the weirdos. But, I think it's a lot. Well, listen, let's face it, sweetie. That, that's, uh, that's putting it mildly, you being a weirdo. Well, yeah, I mean, it started like around puberty. So. Okay. Do you so, self-cut? Do, what? Do you cut? Sometimes. You cut on yourself? Yeah. Are you aroused by that? Yeah. And you go see horror films, things like that, because those are arousing to you? Yeah. Do you have any feelings about menstruating or anything? Does that have, do anything that's funny for you? Mm, sometimes. It weirds me out a little. Hey, uh, you have a boyfriend? Uh, I used to. All right. How was that? That would be no. Yeah. And do you, do you think... You could have a relationship with a guy, not get into any uh, bloodletting, and enjoy yourself, or would you have to have it take a turn? Uh, I really don't know. I haven't like had sex or anything. Uh, you're a virgin. Yeah. Okay. So, were you ever beaten or anything like that? Not that I can remember. And sexual abuse. No. Oh, All right. Adam, well, then get Adam, over it. Adam, sexual abuse. No. <laughs> All right, listen, then, then just get over it. You're a virgin, right? Right. All right, go I, talk to a shrink then. Listen, here's the whole... What? I already talked to a shrink. All they're telling me is just, like... All they're saying is, is it's just something, like a stage. That's all. All right. Yeah, there, there's various theories about this kind of thing. that the It's blood... a stage that lasts 70 years. Yeah, this is not the typical cutter by any means. This is the, a true sort of blood fetish, and... Nah, there's all kinds of crazy theories about it. The reality is no one knows for sure what causes these things, so... But that doesn't it always have to mean, like, screwed up childhood? Oh, it means screwed up in some way, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here's the deal, everybody. I don't know if Lauren's still listening or not, but... Look, you... Everyone has impulses that are... You know, my impulse is to scratch my ass vigorously and then sniff it. No. But I don't do it when I'm on TV, for instance. You wait till the camera stop rolling. You I wait till the camera stops. No, I, I don't do it in front of large groups. Usually. I don't do it. But here's what I'm saying. There's all sorts of impulses. There's all sorts of things you want to do, but you don't do them because they're not right, and you'll be judged, and they're unhealthy. Treat this as one of those things. Thank yes? you. Yes? Thank you. Courtney, 17. Well, Yes, you're right. Well, what other advice you want to? I no, mean, nothing more you can do. I, I think we get into too much psycho babble about yeah, stuff. It's just yeah. like, look, stop it. It's yeah. it's not good for you. It's not good for society, and it's gonna it's gonna be hard for you. All right, Courtney. Hello. Hi. Hey. Oh, hi. Um, first, can I thank you guys? I've been listening to you for about two years, and because you, I left left my abusive mother. I went to a shelter, and now I'm in a foster home, and so it's just been. Really Sp- good. Speak up, Courtney. You can't hear you. Oh, I just was say, wanted to say thank you because. I listened to you guys. I left. I left an abusive household, and I went to a shelter, and now I'm in a foster home. And it's just, it's just been really good. Oh, great! What was going on at home? Um, actually, my mother locked me in the bathroom for about the 
past two years was about October 2001. And whoa, 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 slow down. You, you th- two years? Toss that off as though she'd uh, made you, you know, toast for breakfast. She, she locked you in the bathroom for two years? Yeah, and I used to listen to you guys every night sometimes. She get... locked you in the bathroom for two years? Yeah. How did you eat? She would let me out for dinner. At first, she'd let me have it three times, then it just went down to once a day. Was she arrested? No, she is. She's gone missing. At, at first, they just took away me. Then a couple of days there, they took away my brother and put him straight into foster care. I'm, I'm in a wheelchair, so it was easier to place him. And and now she's gone missing. And uh, now she's, like, there's been a couple of hearings. And in the last hearing, she claimed that I'm Apache so that she could stall, stall for time to, to try and try and take try and um, buy time so that she can do whatever she needs to do. To where, where was your dad? Hold, hold, hold on a second. Wild. She claimed she was Apache? Yeah, I mean, it's, what? So, it's so freaking weird. She hasn't talked about him my whole life. Every time I mention him, she gives me a look like, mention him and you die. So now she said in court, at least this is what I'm hearing, I still have to talk to my DA. She said that I'm part Apache. And it, and my foster mom, she told me that one of, one of her little babies that she has, her mother tried the same thing. And it's just to buy time because they have to check it by law. They have to check each and every record. What what time. does her being Apache do for her other than it, time? And what's the what's the it point? It buys time because they have. They I know. Have, I understand they have to check it out, but what's the point that she's trying to make about because, being an Apache? Because I'm almost 18, so if she can like just wait. To, uh, maybe if she can stop. No, off. Courtney. Courtney. I don't know. Why? Other than declaring she's an Apache. Why Whoa. does that buy you time? No, I don't want to know that. Because they have to check it out. It takes a long time to check the records. Why, why, why do you have to buy? Why, why do you have to check the records out if someone claims they're Apache because anymore? Because and if they check their uh, Eskimo when they're trying, <laughs> because, because they have to prove it in court. And the, by the meantime, she turns 18, and the mom is off the hook, kind of thing. And she can keep my little brother. Right. The, I know, but hold on. Let me talk to is, what, what does being an Drew. Apache? Why does being an Apache defend her against prosecution for having locked her child and imprisoned her child? I don't know. Why would you but, even but, bring it up? Why would they even care at the court? Like, fine, you're patchy, whatever. Let's get on with it. Okay. Oh, I know, Drew. That's what I said ten minutes ago, and you said, well, because they got to check it out and no. buy some time. Why, why do they have to check it out? Why do they care? That's, that's my question. That's the question you should have been asking. I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> Again. All right. So anyway, you got you're in a wheelchair. Yeah. How come? We're, we're in a wheelchair. Yeah. Part of the question. Um, when I was six, I was par- paralyzed in a playground accident. What happened? Um, you want the whole story? Mm, uh, cause, cause the 10 second version. Okay, I was pushed off the jungle gym because it was built shoddy. Okay. The construction workers were skimming money off the top, so they put concrete and covered it up with mulch. And, and you got pushed off a jungle gym, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, and then I got a bruise on my spine. The nurse, instead of taking me to the hospital, she put me in a cubicle. It happened at 10 in the morning. I, I, I didn't get help, help until past two. So I was just stuck in the thing, just screaming as my like okay. my legs swole. I now have a flat bladder because it nearly tore. I was just wondering, could the injury like could could the injury cause a depression? Could it? Could ha- the, having an injury like that can make you depressed. But what? Being, no, I mean yeah. being imprisoned by your mom and having locked, a mom in that, a wheelchair and locked in the bathroom. That's yeah. depressing. Forget the back injury. Just being no, in a wheelchair and locked know, in a bathroom. I know that's the help. Ha- Habitational because I certainly have been feeling better since I've left that environment. I've, I mean, just yeah. completely 360. But I was wondering, like 180, 180, 180. 360, <laughs> bring you back where you were. You're back in the bathroom at 360. <laughs> Sorry, I was completely retarded. Um, Sorry. No, um, I'm talking about biological effect. Like uh, I understand. The dolphins damage, like, mm. like could it damage the stuff? Could it like no. self destruct the machine? No, no, not not. It's all, not it's all your mom. That's all your horrible childhood. Yeah, you have plenty of reasons to be depressed without having to draw up a biological explanation. Okay. And if you had the most pristine upbringing and were not depressed about having a disability, it probably wouldn't uh, cause anything. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so so the thing is, is yeah, she's, she's out of the bathroom. She's in foster care. Doing better. It's, it's doing, doing better. Yeah. That's what we like to hear. Thank you. And we, okay. we don't care uh, what percentage of Apache your mom is. But we do want your mom uh, punished. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, but we really do. No, no, where are you call? Where is she calling from, by the way? Gilroy. Gilroy, Where's California. It? Oh, okay. I didn't know if there was some sort of thing that if you were, you know, maybe if you're a certain percentage American Indian that you have to be tried by some uh, council of elders who or knows? something. Yeah, who <laughs> knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, you need a heap of wampum for attorney. 
All right. Michael's 25. Michael. Yes. Yeah. Guys? Go. Hey there. How's it going? Good. You guys Good. Have, a, have a great show, man. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, for, for, for about the past four years, I've been having sex, and, and let's say um, about three times, two to three times a week, uh, right before that point, you know, I would press on a spot beneath my, my testicles, and it would stop from anything going out. And I want to know if that's actually, like, safe or if it's going to have some type of long-term, you know, effect. You would do that while you were alone? Uh, no, no, no. Well, I was with, with the girl. You know? What's the goal? Why are you doing um, that? So nothing would actually, you know, come out. And I know that's not going to stop her from getting, you know, from getting pregnant. Possibly going to stop. Yeah. But is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to use that as a contraceptive? No, no, no. Not at all. Just Why are you doing it? Cleanly, cleanliness reasons. Cleanliness. Yeah. Wow. It's next to godliness, except wow. for the part where you put your index finger up your ass. Wow. Then it, uh, then it gets out of the realm of godliness. Wow. Uh, now, what is that? And and what is, I mean, look, I understand not wanting to, you know, have your belly look like a seagull crapped on it <laughs> when you're done with your business. But that's sort of part where right in the middle of the best part of the sex, you take your finger and you're shoving it around and you're giving yourself this like retrograde thing. That just seems like an undue distraction in the, in the part where you least want to be distracted. It's, it's actually where, I mean, half the time... It'll be me, then half the time it's you know, her. But it's a spot right beneath the actual boys, and then she'll press right there, and it stops anything. What, and is she, it, when, what is her goal in stopping it? Well, it's just, I mean, whether it's actual actual intercourse or oral. Ah, she, okay, there's her motivation. You got yeah. that, Adam? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's just like a smokeless cigarette. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, that starts to make some sense. Well, anyway, we don't know that it's going to hurt anything. We had a urologist up here a couple of weeks ago, Jennifer Berman, who never heard of this before. Oh, really? She, she hadn't heard of it? Well, she had trouble, like, even processing it. What? Huh? What? Well, I don't know. Well, it, does, it doesn't make sense it, to most humans. Yeah, it's, it's a retrograde ejaculation. The ejaculate goes into the bladder, basically. It's certainly not good for you, but I, we don't know that it's bad for you. Okay. All right? That'll work. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, but here, here's the uh, here's the caveat. If you, if you, when something is coming out of your body, number one, number two, a sneeze, whatever it is, a cough or semen, and you stop it, over the long haul, it's not going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. It just can't be. Colleen, your body's not designed that way. That's right. Yeah, you. Hi. Um, I've been going out for this boy for about a year. Well, not boy, but he's like twenty, and um. Yeah, I'm not liking him anymore, and I've been cheating on him quite a bit, and he's pretty much in love with me, and I'm not, and he's, like, relying on me to, like, like, relying on me so much that, like, I, like, I made him stop, like, smoking cigarettes and smoking weed and doing, like, hardcore drugs and stuff, so he said if I ever break up with him that he'd probably, like, fall apart and, like, maybe kill himself or maybe, like, you know... Totally yeah. how, how long has this been going on, this relationship? A year. A year. Why Why are you out of love with him? Because he quit doing all those things you were trying to get him to quit? No. There's nothing it's less more, to do? It, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm not interested in him. He's not even attractive to me anymore, really. It's just, yeah. He's not a bad boy anymore. He's in love with you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Gross. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Colleen. Yeah, she's 18. She's hot. She got a guy who was kind of a bad boy. He was doing some drugs. He was doing some smoking, some drinking. Well, no, she, uh, he stopped. He's yeah, stopped that's the point. That's why you're not. While. That's right. That's why you're not into him anymore. No, that's not why. Well, yeah. I just want to know how I can let him go. At, like, hey, Adam, let make her listen life. to you. That doesn't matter. You gotta, you gotta cut him loose. Any way, you, any way you look at it. If he needs oh, help, how? if he needs help, get him to help. So there's a caretaking team to receive him. Whether I mean, it's what, a 12 he wants to kill himself? Yeah, whether it's a professional or a 12-step program, get, see well, to it that he gets somewhere. Then then it's really out of your hands. You, well, you, you, not, hey, like, Colleen, yeah. you, you can't be responsible for his feelings, okay? And we can't magically take him away from you and make him go away. You've gotten yourself into this thing. If you want to do what's right, make you know. otherwise just dump him come what may. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be a bad thing for him. 
If you want, if you have any compassion left, then see to it that he gets into hands that can handle him when wow. he falls apart when you leave, because you can't be responsible wow. for his feelings. Hold on, how how is she, how is she gonna make sure she's 18? What's she gonna do? She, she can well, she got him to do all these things. Okay, look, I've, you're, you seem to need some help. <laughs> now, look, how, well, how do you I get just... him? How, what do you, what do you, how do you get him into a team? How do you, how do you get a, a range of team to take <laughs> care of him? Drew, a, 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 a psychiatrist would take care. She doesn't know a psychiatrist. She doesn't. She doesn't know. She, she's 18. She doesn't know anything. Well, I just wonder if I could, like, break up with him so easily or something, some certain time or some place or somehow. Here, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. You need to, A, do it over the phone. What? Forget about, the, you know what, this whole uh, you owe it to do it, do it to me in person kind of thing, that just, that's just the worst day of your life. Yeah. And why do you need to do it in person? And let me just put this out there for, with everybody. If you want to break up with me, if you want to fire me, if you want to do anything bad, do it over the phone. Just yeah. pick up the phone and call me. Mm. I don't want to meet you somewhere for lunch and have uh, 45 minutes of uncomfortable conversation before we get to the reason we both went to lunch for. Mm. And then another 45 minutes of a public display of you know morose and you know, crying. and it, it's, it's humiliating. Just do it over the phone. But here's what I think you need to do. I think you need to say, we are breaking up. And there's zero chance we're ever going to get back together. And I know that sounds cruel, and I know you hate me, and I think as the years wear on, you'll appreciate that I did it this way. I'm sorry. That is it. There's no way we're ever getting back together. Drew, don't you wish someone would have done that with you many years ago? If you're going to break up, you must leave no possibility of any doors open, period. Yeah. Right. That, that is essential. Now However, then, if, as a if, human being, you've, you've created kind of a monster here. Yeah. Well, it's not her fault. Well, she yes, she had to go make this guy de so dependent on her. I mean, it's not her fault, but she has done it. And if she really wa has a, sort of a ethical compass, I would think she'd want to sort of hand off at least. If she, if her motivation for getting this guy better was to get him better, not to do something for herself, she should yeah. still be focused on that and yeah. make sure he st falls into the hands of people that can keep him better. Yeah. When you leave. What do you mean falls into the hands? Gets into the hands. Can get him. Gets into how, the how does that work? D you you go to, it's unrealistic. It's, well, well, like his friends or something. That could just be like something back up, you know? Well, at the very like, minimum. Because maybe like another girl or... No, I mean like uh, he's going to need... Another girl. <laughs> I like uh, I like your style, though, Cookie. I like with another girl. Set, <laughs> set me up with somebody when they dump me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, you you break up in no uncertain terms. If he says I'm going to kill myself or I can't then live you, without you, call you, the police. Boom. Yeah. That's it. Period. Yeah. And I mean, you yeah. get the That's police there, works. pick him up. Then he gets in the hands that can help him. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. well, All yeah. right. Well, true. What, what do you? What do you? She's 18. Uh, listen. What do you think she's got? She has a, a team of psychiatrists. She's going to dispatch in the psych van over to the guy's house. It's, it's, I don't know. it's possible. You know I'm right. Hey, it, it, you you're right on paper, but who cares? That's not good for anything. She, she really has meddled in somebody's life and created... What do you mean? She has. She's really created this... She's, she has made this guy very dependent on her. Uh, she and now she's like... A... Now she's extremely, like, cavalier. Ah, this guy's I don't know, like... Well, yeah, yeah. Drew's angry. Drew's at luck. She's 18. He's 21. This well, stuff it's, goes it's, on He's all responsible, the time. too. Uh, yeah, of course. They're together is. for a year. Hey, when she met him, oh, he was no. boozing and smoking and doing drugs. Now he's cleaned himself up. So yeah, be it. But he's off drugs, but he's sicker <laughs> the problem. All right. True. True. All right, you got to really, you got to take a look in the hey, mirror, but Adam, you got to relax. We're going to break. All right. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. And this is Dr. Drew. I'm going to see myself a little Danish, you know? You travel, you can eat Danish, Drew. Where'd you get it? Vic get some for you? Oh, uh, no, man cow. I had it lying around. I don't know. It was sitting somewhere. That's good. I, I, I tell you, if people would start leaving around poison food, I, I would die in about 15, 20 minutes. Aren't, they, <laughs> aren't their new studios cool? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I told you. Uh, first off, it's at the uh, Merchandise Mart yeah. over here, yeah. which uh, we do talk about once in a while, but... Uh, uh, for those of you uh, who don't know it, well, a couple things. 
Should we talk about the merchandise mart for a second? It, it's, the, it's the biggest building in the world other than the Pentagon, as I understand mm -hmm. it. And it, it. It sits in the middle of Chicago on the river. Strangely, no one in Chicago seems to know it's there what it is. But or it is this the, yeah. giant, giant, beautiful old building in which there's tons of old furniture stores, merchandise stores, and, and a, radio, a couple radio stations. Yeah, and the river runs right, right by it. Yeah. And uh, what river is that? You know what the Chicago river, river? Is that Chicago River? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, makes sense. But here's the deal with Chicago's. We were we were tooling around last night and uh, walking around all day today. It, it, it's such a town, you know. I, I mean, love I that mean, town. it's the architecture's great. Yeah. The place is clean. There's people walking around. Yeah, yeah. Like when you're from L.A., if someone is walking, they're suspect. Oh, I mean, they're they, coming after you. Yeah, it's just, you know, panhandlers, guys wanting to do your windshield, guys pushing a shopping cart. Like, you don't see normal people walking on the street. No. Something, something's gone terribly wrong. Yeah. I mean, if you see a normal person walking on the street, it means they, their, their the car died. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're trying to find a payphone or something. But just great architecture, great city, laid out beautifully. You know, the lake's right there. The river runs right through the middle of the town. People are riding bicycles around. I mean, it's just, I know the, I, I know the winters are, are brutal. I've never uh, experienced them, but I'll I've take been the word I've, I've for I've it. I've been in the winter. They're not as bad as New England, in my opinion. A little windier, but not, New England worse. It's just a great-looking town with some really great old architecture. Where are you staying? Four seasons. Now, is mm. that thing swaying in the breeze or what? You got that yet? Yeah. First night, I didn't feel it. Second night, all I heard was creaking. You hear the creaking as it moves. They give you, yeah, they they give, give you ear, earplugs. They give you earplugs. And, you know, for a guy who likes earplugs, that's uh, <laughs> that's my kind of hotel. But I, I was way up at the top, and I was ro I'd roll in bed like on a ship. It was crazy. Yeah. It is uh it is really it, it's really gorgeous gorgeous town. I, I recommend uh and, and and it's full of people sort of walking around who live here who seem to enjoy it. Yeah. They're like they're proud of it. They yeah. like it. Yeah. It's totally different than Los Angeles. Just a bunch of nomadic people who are all sort of pissed off and uh, it's really it's really it, it, LA is just nothing but sort of Mexico Mexicans <laughs> who have sort of, you know, jumped the jump the uh, border, and then just a bunch of a-holes trying to make it in the movie industry. There you go. That's LA. Just, uh, yeah, just number the number one a-hole from all uh, a-holes from all around the country just end up in L.A. Well, that, that, that'd be fair. Those that don't make it to Florida cruise on over here, right? Different breed. Okay. F Florida's that sort of waffle-eating, banjo-picking, sort of uh, trying to stay one step ahead <laughs> of the uh, D.A. You the, know, because... The, the, because yeah, here, here it's the narcissistic a-hole. There it's the no-count a-hole. Yeah, yeah. Florida has uh, deadbeat dads. Right. Here we just got a bunch of sort of you know, half a fag uh, <laughs> Hollywood types that really are up to nothing. Okay. Let's nothing but attitude. Time. All right. Hendro, 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I recently just got a tattoo, like, about maybe a month ago, and it healed all right and everything. But, like, the thing is, I really, really, like, got addicted to the pain. Like, I would go, like... As much as like I could, if I, if, like it wasn't like, you know, if I knew what I wanted and stuff. But like <laughs> I really liked it. <laughs> I really liked it. It was like, yeah, it was a good enjoyed thing. it. Yeah, well, uh, there are other forms of pain. I mean, there are other ways you can you can receive pain. Yeah. You know, without leaving well, such a permanent mark. But people do get kind of addicted to uh, tattoos, both in terms of I think they get some sort of psychological gratification, well, well and beyond just the pain. The quality of the pain seems to be something that people can... It arouses endorphin levels for some reason. And I guess the big question, Handro, is do you have alcoholism in your family? Yeah, I do. That's yeah. really weird that you said that. My dad is really addicted to alcohol, too. And yeah, like, all right. It's all a problem right. for me, too. All right, all right. Well, so this may be part of your alcoholism. If you're, if you're really picking up momentum with the alcohol before you go sleeve your arms out... Maybe go to some AA meetings, get a sponsor, start talking about this a little bit. And see Where's my bourbon? Maybe this isn't something that's just more a part of your disease than anything else, and maybe you won't be so anxious to do it when you've uh, had a little recovery. This is Andrea, 21. What, Adam, what the Are you, like, hmm. building a erector set there? Is like, is between your breathing and, yeah. and the origami you're working on? Or what is that? Uh, I was trying to get the goddamn uh, page flipped over on my uh, notebook, and it was fighting me. I was like, the, you know, trying to do it with one hand without putting the mic. But it sounded like you were doing push-ups all the while. <laughs> well, that's my nose. Yeah, no kidding. 
Yeah, yeah I'm normally a mouth breather, though, you know. Yeah, no kidding. Andrea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi. Hey. Hey. What's up? Um, you were talking earlier about how guys and girls are so different and, like, women think that guys think the same way we do. Right. They are so different. Yeah, yeah, it's not at all the same. Right. Um, my boyfriend and I have been together for almost a year, and I know he loves me. My family adores him. He's a great guy. But, <laughs> like, I've gotten flowers twice, and I had to ask for them both times. And I just want him to do something thoughtful, just one thing. You yeah. know? Just yeah. Like, about I don't know how to get him to do it. One thing would last me, like, six months. You know what? You, you have to sit him down. Because the, the, what you feel when you get flowers... There's, n there's no equivalent experience for the male. That, that, no. Is, that, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, go well, ahead. Well, no, no. I wasn't going to say sex, but it's what we feel when we don't give flowers. That's the equivalent <laughs> feeling. See, I mean, so we've we got a little standoff going, cost, sweetie. It doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't have to. I mean, if he would just plan a date or do something. It, it, I, I understand I it. Listen, I understand it, but it, it, it took me 10 years to figure it out. I mean, you really, you really, it's so far, it's so foreign to the way a male's mind works in terms of what's satisfying in a relationship. You have to sit down, you have to, like, give him instructions. Like, every three months, I need the following in order to feel close in this relationship. You have to be really super ultra clear. Yeah, I've done that. You've done that. I've, I know. I've asked right. him, and he forgets. And well, All right, well, then, then dump him. <laughs> then he may not be able to respond. He, he's such a great guy. and I'm, Well, then quit complaining. Then put it on his computer or something to remind him. Something that, you know... Get, get, oh, that is a good idea. Yeah, something that... You, <laughs> and put in not just on the computer, but specific instructions about what he is to do. Flower, yeah, dinner... But, okay, but let me, let me explain the fundamental flaw in that thinking, which is women want these, these sort of spontaneous romantic acts, but if you put it on the guy's computer for the, you know, the 10th of February... It hardly is spontaneous. No, I disagree. I, dis I disagree because you do. A, a guy, you do. all he has to do is pay attention and, and do those things, actually make the phone calls, make the reservation, and carve out the time and be present. That's it. That's all he's got to do. But to yeah, remember but to do that when that's something that's so foreign to something you would think would be enjoyable, <laughs> or not enjoyable, but, but you need, yeah. to must remind you. Well, here, here's the thing. Here's what you got to do. You you got to get him about halfway there. I agree with Drew. You have an anniversary coming up. You have a birthday coming up. You have something coming up. Put it on the guy's computer or his uh, daily planner or something and tell him, look, you know, one month from now, it's going to be our one-year anniversary. Surprise me and don't disappoint me. And give him a chance to do something. But, you know, she just said he only, he's only got me flowers twice in uh, a year. And each time I had to tell him to get it. I know. Which doesn't sound like she's enjoying the flowers no, all that no. much. I know. All right. So that's that's my whole point. Oh. Uh, women are tough. Well, let's face it. Yeah. I had a girlfriend once. I got her. Uh, <laughs> she's a big Tori Amos fan. Like uh, junior, 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 junior producer Lauren. Yeah. Not to the point where she could fly to like Sydney and go see. Uh, like Lauren uh, would. Yeah, like yeah. Lauren would. Yeah, she'd yeah. go follow Tori Amos. She'd go on tour with her if she yeah, could. Of course. She, she practically does. I'm jealous of her, by the way. Hmm. But the, the point is, is I, I was doing something on the morning show, and Tori Amos came by. Some fans gave Tori, like, a b nice bouquet, and Tori left him behind. Hmm. She, like, sniffed him and put him back down again. So I brought him home to my girlfriend. I said, hey, guess what? I got you some flowers. And secondly, guess whose flowers they are? These are Tori Amos's flowers. Oh. So not only not only do you get flowers, but you get it from your idol, Tori Amos. Oh. Now she's pissed. These are those gold dust moments. She just re now, reject it, them totally. I'm sure. Is a guy, is a guy like let's say like a cordless drill. If my girlfriend brought me a 14 volt cordless drill and said, "Guess what? Ron Jeremy left this in the studio, and I'm giving oh. it to you," I'd be like, "Oh my God! Oh. Oh, we got to get married." Yeah, you're like, the greatest woman in the world. Genius, genius. Gee, this is this is it's free. It's crafty. I got a tool. It's got a it story. Used, I got a story behind the tool. Who knows where this it's is, been? This is win, win, win. Yeah, yeah. No, not women. No, pissed off. Yeah, this they're totally unrealistic that way. Yeah, All awful. right, but listen, guys. Here's what you got to do. You have to understand that they're that way and just do it. <laughs> you, you just do. Yeah, it's, you, you it's can't like, pretend like, that's going to go away. It's not going away. No. For what? No, don't go away. You, you, you know, here's what you got to do, guys. Once, uh, have a picnic. 
They'll go nuts for a picnic. Do that picnic thing. Tell me you want to go on a picnic this weekend. Uh, here's Tanya. Oh. She's <laughs> a Danish picnic. Uh, I, I swear I could smell that all the way over here. What, what flavor? Uh, a little cheese. <laughs> no, try Strawberry. again. Cherry. Cherry. No. Cinture. What is it? <laughs> Lemon. Oh, no, never. Not in a million years. There must have been some well, garlic in there. All right. Tanya, yeah, what's up? Hi. Hey. Hey, I have some left nipple discharge, and it's black and green. <laughs> oh, Danish is coming up. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, and it started at Claire in 2002. And oh, then my God. You had it for a year? Yeah, and then about um, October time, it was bloody. Why didn't you have it checked? I have. Okay, and? And, and, and they say that's normal. Did you, have, I, did you have a mammogram? I've had a mammogram, I've had a doctorgram, and I've talked to a surgeon, but it turned out to be a general surgeon. Mm -hmm. And he told me it was normal. That's good. Is it normal? What do you mean a general surgeon? That, that is who does breast surgery, a general surgeon. Actually, it's a breast surgeon that does it, doesn't it? General surgeons are often, many yeah, of them specialize in breast procedures, yes. Okay, because I have a history of breast cancer in the family. Well, you had all the all the screening procedures, the Dr. Graham and the mammogram. That's about all you can do, other than remove your nipple on the glands. No, I don't want to remove the nipple. Yeah, I mean that's yet. that's it. But uh, did they do an endocrine workup to make sure that there's nothing sort of stimulating breast production? Yeah, I my gyno did that. Okay, so there you go. You've done everything right, and that's just you. Really? Yeah. No, with the, the black bloody black discharge. discharge. The black is just it, maybe it's old blood. Yeah, it's old blood. Did they ever um, try antibiotics for you? They, yeah, 10 days of Cipro yeah. and 30 days of erythromycin. Mm. They told me it was a staph infection. Well, then it may not be cleared. Maybe the next step is for you to see an infectious disease person because that uh, the green suggests persistent infection. Yeah. Who are yeah. we coming up on? Uh, Drew, give us the colors. I mean, if it's coming out of the nipple, well, white in, anywhere, Really anywhere, yellow yellow is, is, is infection. Okay, really. Yellow is infection. Yeah, and, and, and what's white, green? white can be. Green can be. But it's mm -hmm. from the nose and the throat and whatnot. It doesn't have to be. All right. uh, and then uh, black is old blood usually. All right. Brown is blood. Uh, yeah, good times. Those are good times, huh? Hey, All it's right. time for another break. Yeah, who's coming up when we come back, Drew? Oh, um, hmm. How about uh, Greg? No. Yeah? No. No? Not Greg? No. He hasn't earned it? No. So you got to be uh, uh, Jason, whose girlfriend wears clothing during sex. All right. All right. All right, after this. Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's Loveline of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. I'm out here in Chicago. Drew back in uh, Los Angeles. And I have a request. I, I want to hear the hizzle for chisel uh, little uh, intro from now on every break. The rest of the show. Really? For intro. Yeah, why not? Got it. All right. Okay. All right. We'll, uh, we'll get uh, Drew's crank anchor tape in here, by the way. Yeah, right. Yeah, that'll happen. You know, it was, uh, it was funny. Actually, it'll just be funny for us. It won't be funny for anyone listening. But um, we uh, there's a guy who used to play for the Mets. He was an all-star many years ago. And uh, Jimmy always thought I looked like him. His name was uh, Ed Crane Poole. Hmm. Remember that guy, Drew? I don't. All right, thanks. I, I was not a, I was not a huge baseball fan. I got to tell you. So go tell me more. Well, Ed Cranepool's this sort of all starry guy from the uh, late '60s, and probably made it into the mid '70s, maybe even late '70s. Had, had a nice career with the uh, Mets. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Jimmy has always said I looked like Ed Cranepool, and uh, it's always just been his own uh, personal uh, little thing. Like so, uh, lo and behold, Ed, Ed was there today. Is that true? No. Okay. So go ahead. All right. Let's just take some calls. Let's take calls. Did anybody else understand why that was troubling him? What? what why? Well, Drew, what if he was there? That's exciting. I know, but why would you want to tell everybody he was there if he was there? You ever think about that? Anderson, can you help me? Or Ann? You don't understand that? See, Adam has a memory, so I don't want to get involved because he's back tomorrow night. Look, go ahead. See, you were trying to speed the story up, and he wanted to tell it his way, and I could see both sides. I see I'm both trying sides. to speed up. I'm just trying to participate. I'm just trying, if I don't participate, he gets mad at that, too. So it's hard. If I, I said, because I, I just had well, said, first off, Adam, Drew, I, just, I just said, I don't yes. know baseball. And you got all mad right. at that, so I thought, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to try to try to get into this conversation. All right, all right. Well, forget it. But listen, here's my point. 
Yeah. When are you ever right when you jump ahead on the story? Never right. Never. But it's not, ever... about, it's not about being right. It's about participating. All right. We can participate by just going, yeah, uh-huh. Okay. All right. But all, here's what I'm saying. What if Ed Crane Pool was there? Then we're, we're then we have a give and take. Then it's like yes, no, then you, that, then, then you that, jumped, there he was. No, then you jumped the story. You yes, see what I'm saying? Huh? Yes. yes you, sir, you, don't, you don't understand that? Yes, sir, Miss Scroll. I guess. Yes, sir, Miss Scroll. Like if you're telling a story and your wife just jumps ahead to the end. Yeah, and you go, yes, that's right. He was there. No, oh, no, but he wasn't there. Oh, that sucks. All right, but anyway, forget the story. Let's move ahead. All right. This is uh, Jason, who's 21. Jason? Yes. Yes? Uh, I have a question. Uh, I've been with my girlfriend for two years. Um, she has, she, when we have sex, she always, it has to be dark, or she wants to, uh, she don't ever take all her clothes off. She, like, leaves her shirt on and wants to be under the covers. Or if it's in the shower or whatever, she has to have the lights off. All the, and she says, uh, if she it's in the shower? Fat. Yeah, she says because she's fat. You guys have dark sex in the shower? Because <laughs> that can be dangerous. <laughs> Most of the serious accidents in the home happen in the bathroom, you know. That's right. All right, so, so listen, Jason. Yeah, she says she thinks she's fat. It, so that's, that's the reason. Is she? Uh, no. When I when I first met her, she weighed like 115, 120, and she's had uh, two kids, so she weighs I think right now maybe like 150, 155 maybe. 155. Yeah, somewhere. So so to her, she doesn't but, like. But but, she, but she's not she's not big. She looks fine the way she is. Hold she, on, you're wait a minute. You're 21. Yes. How old is she? 20. <laughs> she's 20. And when you first met her, huh, she hadn't had any kids. How long she ago had, is that? She had, a, she had a kid before uh, when I met her. Wow. And and now you two had a second kid? Yes. Oh, okay. I just kicked the trash can over by mistake. This is one that uh, Jason's kid is one that set her down, made her bed. Okay. And so she doesn't like how she looks is really the issue. Yes. Right. Well, does she have an eating disorder? Did she ever have an eating disorder? No. Okay. And And you've tried reassuring her, tried telling her that it's not something that's an issue for you? All the time. And she can't respond. Yeah, you know, we don't. although we don't hear about this much on Loveline, it's not an uncommon thing for women to feel that way and to insist upon that sort of thing. And um, not a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah, I don't know, except maybe ease her into it a little bit, sort of make, maybe make some candlelight or something that... Uh, so yeah, strike a compromise. I've, I've tried everything, man. I mean, just, uh, for two years, though, I think maybe she would ease up after a while, you know, of, you know... Being. How about some uh, How about some night vision goggles, like a <laughs> military surplus? You see the heat radiating from her vagina? It's all, it's all red. What if you don't? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, look. She She's somebody who has issues, and, and those issues need to be addressed, and not really addressed through you trying to look at her naked with the light on, but Just makes it these are self-image issues that she needs to kind of work on. Or is she work on losing the weight and exercising and doing those good healthy things uh, if it really is that important to her. I'm worried, though, that she has some sort of body dysmorphic disorder if really she is as okay as you say she is and she doesn't feel so. Well, what, what do you think? I know he's on hold, but uh, I'm curious if when she was 115, she let him, you know, she did it with the lights on. Jason? Yes. Did she do it with the lights on when she was 115? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so it's just this. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it doesn't make sense to me because, I mean... Well, she weighs 50% more than she did when you met her. Yeah. I mean, how much do you weigh? I weigh, I weigh 160. Uh, 160? 160? 160? Yes. Yeah. What if you weighed 240? Uh, it's the same thing. Is it, you know, yeah, she's up 50%. Here's the beauty of guys. Guys, are 240, <laughs> guys 240, they take their shirt off at the ball game at 65 <laughs> degrees. Put a big K on the chest or something. They, they rest, they use uh, their gut to hold the beer oh, up. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, Jason, we don't have a lot of good ideas other than uh, trying to strike a compromise with the kind of light and or getting her maybe into some sort of exercise program, dietitian, something where she loses the weight and feels better about herself because she was okay before. Yep. So so when are you coming back? I'm um, coming back tomorrow morning. Mm. <laughs> well, of course, Drew. What time? What time are we meeting in the lobby tomorrow, buddy? <laughs> uh, what time? 5.15. Uh, no. We're meeting in the lobby at 7A, but... I'll not get, which, which, by the way, is 5A, your time. 
Well, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll not be getting back to the room until two thirty oh. tonight. So the uh, you know, and then uh, when we land, it's like, hey, it's uh, we got to go to Jimmy's show. Oh my like god, we're just going straight into work. Yeah, it's oh. gonna be horrible. Oh. I'm gonna write jokes all tired. Oh. Plus, uh, they I, they may need may need, need me to like co-host tomorrow night because uh, Jack Osborne is supposed to be co-hosting, but they can't. ABC needs a work permit or something. Because he's not 18. Because he's not 18, although he does everything under the sun. Oh my God! But they're so freaked out because they're Disney and oh. Oh, who the hell knows? It's, it's it's a disaster. All right, it's time for another break. All right, we'll be back. <laughs> Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. My That's, gizzer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's Dr. Drew over there with his gizzer. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I'm out here in Chicago. I was just uh, talking to uh, Vic, the engineer out here. Vic, uh, we're t we're uh, complaining about cars, and uh, I was telling him that you know in California you're thinking about tripling the uh, licensing fee for these cars, you know, so it's going to go through. And let me tell you, let me tell you something about anything I've ever, any experience I've ever had with anything that has to do with a car, whether it's any kinds of, uh, whether it's traffic tickets, moving violations, registration fees, anything like that. There is no such thing as like a 6% cost of living kind of increase that right. we all get right. at work. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if you're working for the post office, you made 38 k one year, then the next year, you make 38 k again, maybe plus an extra 130 bucks or something. And if five years goes by, you get a 4% increase. Yeah. Anything that has to do with cars goes up 400%. Yeah. Like, it do doesn't inch up. Yeah, you know, like you know, moving violation. You know, it, it was thirty-two bucks. It's it's four hundred bucks now. It, they, they don't they don't just keep inching up with everything else. Wow, it's four hundred I mean, bucks. Really? Well, depending on what you do. Wow. But yeah, they can be that high. Wow. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Whenever they do anything that has to do with an automobile, if it was you know, if it was one hundred and twenty-eight bucks last year, and they they want to oh they want to raise it, it's it, it's not one hundred and forty bucks. Wow. It's now seven. It's now uh, two seventy-five. Hmm. You know, it's like what? You, name me another facet of life where stuff goes up over a hundred percent each time they do it. You know, like, when is the last time uh, a you know moving violation went up eight dollars? And it's always it, it's always it always falls under the heading of well we have to discourage this dangerous behavior so we'll rape the public. Hmm. But Vic Vic was telling me he goes. Uh, yeah, well, uh, so I was saying, you know, these th this car registration thing may go up. Uh, it's car taxing may go. Up, may they're they're going to triple the uh, the amount when you uh, you know each year for your car. Yeah. And Vic's like, uh, yeah, I know, I, I got a few cars, and uh, that's uh, it's almost eighty bucks a car. Oh, <laughs> it's like eighty bucks. I'm I'm like at like four seventy five a car now. Yeah, yeah, eighty bucks. Yeah, Jesus Christ, you you you, you couldn't own a donkey. In L.A. In, in L.A. Yeah. It charge you more than 80 bucks to register a donkey. If they, really? If they really do that to the car registration fees, it's going to be like some sort of some kind of reaction. You know what I mean? Here, yeah, here's all L.A. is. Here's all L.A. is. Zero public transportation, horrible money management, and here's one group of people that needs this certain, this certain apparatus to get around in, or they lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. Let's rape them. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Let the raping begin. Here's where we get the money. Like, what are you going to do, Drew? What are you going to do? Go drive your car out to Sacramento and have a sit-in? No. The thing just comes around and you pay triple what you paid last time. Well, there's that, and then they get us in the rolling stops and the left. Yeah, lane. but I just mean, like, is it okay to raise the price of something that's already too expensive 300%? You just start. It's like uh, the milk. It's no longer a uh, buck eighty-nine a quart. It's not going to be seven fifty a quart. Well, we are talking about recalling our governor because of this crap. Good. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. All right. Where are we going here, Drew? Mm, let's go to Andrew sixteen. Andrew. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey. Um. Yeah, I have a friend, and like whenever I'm over, he like. Well, not all the time, but, like, sometimes he just pops in, like, some weird porn, and it's, like, really disgusting. 
But, like, he's cool and all, and I've known him my whole life, so I don't know what to tell him, you know? The porn is disgusting, or just watching him watch it is disgusting? No, it's like the stuff he's watching. Anything about it that we should know? It's like bestiality. I get bogus all the way here. Yeah. Liar! Liar! Whore! Liar! Whore! You know it! You want to, you want to ask more questions? Uh, I, 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 it's either... It's either bogus or he doesn't care. All right, so I get him back. Which you're really saying is bogus. So do you really care? Yeah, like, how should I tell him, you know? So you what do you mean, how should I? Yeah. Nah, nah, bogus. Yeah, bogus. You've known him your whole life. You just told us. How come you can't tell him? He is like, he flips out real easy. <laughs> like, <laughs> he flips out real easy when you ask him about his bestiality porn? No, like, he thinks that, like, everything's so cool. And, like, most of the stuff he does do is cool, but, like... Yeah, why don't you... What, you can't say to him, eh, I, I, I just don't like that stuff. Just uh, cut it out. Come on. Too much for me. Can't uh, do he that? Fli he, he flips flip out. out. He, he flips out. easy. Yeah. Now get rid of Andrew. Yeah, a jack-off. Here's uh, Julio 20. Julio? Yeah, hi. Oh, hey, what's up? I, I actually had two questions. All right. Um, my first one is, this is um, usually when me and my girlfriend have our intercourse, um, usually the oral is... She goes... I mean, she has an, uh, an orgasm. During oral sex. During oral sex, and she's 19. Well, then, but, you, um, you know, whatever age she is, that would make her normal. A what? Okay, keep going. Okay. I mean, is it weird that she usually has an orgasm with um, oral, but not with regular intercourse? No, that's more than half of all women. It's more than half of all women? Yes. Okay. No, it's just I noticed that whenever we do it somewhere weird, like one time we did it in, well, not at once, but we did it in the car, and she, she would go, like, a lot, like more than once. During the yeah. oral sex? No, no, regular sex. She could have an orgasm in the car? Yeah. With the intercourse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't you get your uh, bed done in Naga Hide or something? <laughs> put a headline around it. That doesn't make yeah. sense to me. Well, no, yeah, she's ex she's excited yeah, by the, the danger. Excited, yeah. That's why, I mean, it was, it was a little bit, it was exciting for me, too, because it was like kind of like, hey, we're in a car, you know. But with, um, right. when we do it here in our bed, in our, in our room, um, it, it it's just not it doesn't go with her you know it doesn't go for her and uh, it's only through oral when she does. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, well, uh, yeah, she's a she's a thrill seeker. Why don't you take her up on the roof? Yeah, but and most like... most of them it, they they can just have it with oral, and that's that. That's that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a this is a twist. Yeah, I don't quite get it. But what's your second question? Okay, my second question is about male pattern boldness. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, my dad's not a bald bald, but he's like half of that way there. And he's like 50-something. I mean, I know my chances are pretty high that I'm going to get bald, too. Is there any way that I could um, change that or have... Yeah, like, start using Rogaine now. Rogaine now? Yeah, and also uh, Proscar, what do they call it? They have a name for what it. What about Propecia. What's that? Avacor? Nah. That uh, shampoo? I mean, just use Propecia. That, that's actually stood up to scientific scrutiny. Avacor is another testosterone-type blocking agent. Crystal19. Hi. Hey. Um, okay, so last night I lost my virginity in a one-night stand. and oh, yeah, it's uh, 19. Yeah, I know. <laughs> one in a million, I swear. Anyhow. Um, yeah, but, but one in a million, then you let it all go on a one-night stand. Yeah, oh, Drew. I'm, I'm just curious. Really I'm not happy with myself, but I went when I went pee this morning, I um, it hurt, and I looked, and I had a sore spot. It was a red little bloody spot. And is that because of the friction that was that happened or why is it there it's you, probably god punishing you you need to have that checked out <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it, it may be an std it's a little bit quick for something to develop uh and it could be oh that's friction a, come on probably it could be it could be urine infection too you're getting anything Cause it, like we, he it wasn't even normal it, he went normal for i guess a virgin um it was in the he it was doggy style like i was on my side and he wasn't behind me he was behind you. Well, was not, he was behind me. Why isn't that normal? No, it's doggy like, style. Most of my friends who have lost their virginity like, did it missionary style first. I see. I see. That. So you guys, you started doggy. <laughs> yeah, I did. Wow. That, that's like the first time you ever go skiing, you go on the Black Diamond Run. <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. I'd rather see yeah. kid, young people pushing the envelope this way than with all the other weird stuff they're getting. You know what I mean? I like this guy, by the way. I like the cut of this fella's jib. <laughs> it's going to de you from behind. Did he know you're a virgin? 
He did, but he didn't believe I was. He's like, if you're a virgin, how come it went in so easily? I'm like, well, sorry. You guys are great, oh aren't they? Oh, my God. Yeah, so he doesn't believe me, but it's, I'm not going to talk to him for about another year. So. Oh, my God, uh, why? Why not? Um, he... He's in a band, so I see him about once a year. Oh, he's, boy. There, he's a family friend, so. Mm. Any band? And what what, <laughs> what, in, what instrument does he play? He's a singer. All right. See see why you guys should start bands? <laughs> right. Yeah. Notice she has no remorse. She's, like, completely fine with her. No, because no, she's in a band. I huh? feel really bad. Like, I feel, I'm, like, I've waited so long, and I, you know, wanted to have... Not perfect, you know, it's not movie-style crap, but... Yeah, but if you can't have that, it's going to be a guy that's on the road in a band. Did, yeah. did you enjoy yeah, yourself? You know, whatever. Did you, did you enjoy it? That, that's another reason. Yeah, I kind of did. You did? I kind of did. Then and, I felt and, really bad. Chris, how did the, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't believe you feel bad. No, I think, I think no, you're telling yourself you should feel bad. You don't have to... Like, Crystal, why do you yeah. have to feel bad? Why? Why do I feel bad? No, you don't feel bad. Why must you feel bad? Okay, I must feel bad because I've waited so long. Yeah, but you don't feel bad, so let but let I it go. Do, no, you do, do not. No, you're I, trying. You're trying to feel guilty. You enjoyed it. It was fine. It was all great. No, fine. but this is my problem. I don't want to see the disappointment in my friend's eyes. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to see her disappointed in me. What, what if you see envy? Yeah, who's I don't think friends? It's gonna be envy. I don't think it's going to be envy. Definitely don't are, think it's going to be envy. Are your friends virgins? No, she's not a virgin. What? what? So, okay, this is one girl? No, no, no. Well, like, she's my best friend. But why can she not be a virgin and you have to be one? No, I don't have to be one. But I've just waited so long, and I've definitely passed on a lot of opportunities. All right. Well, you enjoyed I'm this. Just, this was fun. Yeah, you, that's you, good. Yeah, that's all right. I just hope you didn't <laughs> get did, idea. Did he give you any oral sex? He did. Uh, any chance that's you're, nice. Any chance you're pregnant? No. None. He used a condom? No. <laughs> you're on the pill? I was on the pill. You were on that? This is pretty, it was raw dog. Raw dog, yeah. What yeah. Does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, and then no uh, condom. No condom. Yeah, but, no. and you're on the pill. I was on the pill. I haven't been on the pill for like a month. So you may be pregnant. I could be. Yeah, so get the morning after pill. That, okay. that That's ridiculous. Now you, now you are being silly. Oh, I yeah. told you. But what All if, right. um, how long should I wait before I get a, an appointment? Get the more after the sooner you get it, the more you have 72 hours to get it. The sooner you get it, the more effective it's going to be. It's more effective in the first 24 hours than the second and third. You could tell Crystal was fine. She enjoyed it. She lied. She was happy about it. But I gotta feel bad. I gotta feel bad. I gotta feel guilty. Well, I, I, my so I think, friend, I gotta feel guilty. I think she's a little bit. Uh, she's a little bit giddy about it. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. she nailed a rock star. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I mean, maybe not a rock star, but you know, in, in her, her mind. world and her town and yeah. whatever, a rock star. I like that doggy angle. And then the guy, like, guys are so smooth, like, hey, uh, you, you know virgin because you're, you know, all yoked out down there and slippery. <laughs> <laughs> like the guys accusing her, like, really? You can't just nail her doggy style and hit the road? You got to, you got to, you got to question her virginity? <laughs> you're too big in the coos to be a virgin. <laughs> Have you had a few kids? Oh. Be honest. <laughs> oh. What a smooth talker. Drew, could you ever imagine just like broaching that with somebody? No. You can't be a virgin. You're too big down there. No. That's, no. no. All right. Anyway, here we go. Caitlin, 18. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. Um, okay, first off, if I had gotten the Tori Amos flowers, I would be like totally psyched. So I don't know what was up with that one. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't worry. I sent her pack in a short two years later. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but my question actually had to do with dating. Because, okay, for the past two years or so, I've been with, like, a steady boyfriend. Um, it was 14 months with one, with one and then six months with another. And mm. then I just went on, like, my first date, basically, in two years on Friday night. Wait, 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 wait. You mean because you've had boyfriends for two years, you've not gone on any dates? It's not been, like, like, it's been different, you know? Like, I knew that I could call them the next day, and it wouldn't be, like, weird. Like, I felt like I was stalking the guy or something. Uh, mm -hmm. You know? And, like, this is the first time, like, I don't know. I did end up calling him the next day because, like, whatever, there was this band playing that I wanted to go see. But 
I don't know, it felt weird. Like, it felt like it wasn't my right place to call him. All right. So I was kind of, like, calling about, like, dating rules or something, if there was, like, tips you guys can give. Um, the most, I guess the biggest tip we would give you is if that if he is into you, he will respond. You know what well, I mean? Well, he has been. And, it, like, he's a really awesome guy, and, like, the night was no, no, forget about forget about how you experience him. It's how he experiences you. And if he is into you, uh, you calling the next day is a, is a, is a gift. He couldn't be happier. If, right. if, on the other hand, you're sort of one of many or he's just kind of dating around, then it's a little bit of an intrusion and kind of a hassle, and he might be having to sort of manage you, and he might seem kind of pushing away and backing away. If he is not into dating you any further, you won't hear from him anymore. Yeah, would I say? would say, yeah, I mean, you know what? I, I think a lot of people get caught up in, in terms of the dating tips. They get caught up in what to do to make somebody like them. Can't do and that. And re really yeah. what they need to focus on is honestly appraising and reading yeah. the other person That's and the right. messages they're sending. That's right. So, so it's sort of where are, how do they feel about you and sort of what are they, in, what kind of dating mode are they in? You and know? Here, here's, the, here's the bottom line. If somebody is interested in you, especially a guy, especially a young guy, oh. I mean, hey, if you're talking about a guy who's, you know, maybe, maybe he was, maybe his marriage of 12 years just broke up because he found out his wife had a long-term affair with his best friend or something, oh. and now he's got his two kids at home. If there's something like that, and the guy says, "Hey, I'm sorry, I, I like you. I just we need to take it slow, or I need a, a little time to think." That's a situation where maybe you could listen to him. But if there's some 22-year-old guy who's free and single and there's nothing going on in his life, he will be on top of you if he is into you. And okay. I, I mean literally and figuratively, right, Drew? Absolutely. I mean, he, he will, in he every will way. cut he will cut class, he will call in sick to work, he will drive uh, across Hill and Dale to get to you and be with you if he's into you. <laughs> Okay, then it kind of moves into the second thing. What's the sex rule? Uh, I, I think that's, I don't, I don't think you have to set a rule like it's got to be three and a half dates or anything like that. It's, is it, it's whatever uh -oh. feels right. We lose her? No. Well, we lost, uh, we lost my Hi. connection for a Hi. second. There she is. Yeah, it, it's whatever feels right. I mean, the rule, rule of thumb is, is if you got a guy and you really like the guy and you're thinking long term, yeah, see if you could stretch it out over the course of a few dates uh, before you give up, the, give it up. You know what I mean? Well, Just, that's, uh, it's not exactly it giving hurt. it up. So. What do you mean it's not giving it up? Well, I don't know. It's like it's something that I've just been used to with past boyfriends, and that's another thing that feels weird. You know, like it feels like I have to act different around, you know, somebody that I'm now just dating. Like if, if you can, if if you can trust a guy, you don't have to. Uh, you, people are trying to sort of what's called feel each other out. You got to figure out who this guy is and what he wants in the relationship, and uh, you know, see if you guys kind of fit together before you get too close. That's the idea. It's not you have to act differently. If you completely, if you trust him and he seems to be completely open and is into things as you are, then whatever. But if not, then you got to have to kind of figure it out. Yeah. And, and look, it, it ain't rocket science. If he's into you, he's into you. Yeah. You don't have to worry about freaking. Uh, Drew, yeah. have you? And you, you, you've done a lot of dating. You're, you're a passionate, passionate, passionate man. Uh -huh. hey, have you ever been? And, and, and you've, we've all had girls do something a little weird or freak us out a little bit. But have you ever had anyone you're into drive you away because you found out they were into you? No. You know, like, you went out on a date with somebody, you had a great date, you were really into the person, you were planning on calling them in a couple of days, and they called you first? Of course not. That, no, it doesn't freak you out. You're glad they called, it's right? A, like I said, it's a gift. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a guy, and there's so much made of this, and all those crappy Cosmos and Vogues and all this other nonsense trying to brainwash women. Guys, we're not like you broads. We, we're not going to be freaked out because we find out you're into us. <laughs> If we're, if we want some, you can't yeah. trick us into liking you. You can't make no. us change our feelings. Neither, yes, both huge fallacies. Here's the deal: you're no different than anything we want. Whether it's an apartment we want, car. whether it's a car we want. <laughs> if we want it, we want it. And if we looked at a car and we liked the car and we're planning on getting a car, and the salesman called us and said, you know, I could get it to you a couple days early, we wouldn't be freaked out. We'd just go get it a couple days early. Yeah. 
But if it's a car we really weren't into, you you couldn't put an antenna ball and a uh, and a pine shaped air freshener in there and make us like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely true. This is uh, Ashley seventeen. Hi. Um, first of all, I just want to say that I'm a huge fan of your show and that you guys are awesome, and I love the funny of people. So, um, okay. My question is. That I'm 17 years old and I've been dating my. Hold on a second, Drew. Put her on hold there. <laughs> Anderson she, ran, ran to the the phone she, there. She dropped the uh, dropped the s bomb. Second sentence. <laughs> Four and a half seconds into the call, she drops the s bomb. But uh, she was making right. a compliment. But it was yeah, it was in the context of a compliment. It was a friendly s bomb, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless an s bomb. Okay, let's hear what she has to say now. All right, Ashley, no more S or F words, okay? okay I'm, I'm sorry about that. Unacceptable. Uh, my question is that um, I've been dating my boyfriend, who's uh, 18, for about eight months, and we just recently had sex the, for the first time, and he took my virginity about a month ago. And what happens is sometimes I can orgasm during sex, and sometimes I can't. And when I don't, and he orgasms before me, he gets really sad, depressed. Um, I don't know what to say to him to make him feel like it's not your fault. Here, here's the problem. Here, This is, again, back to that male-female stuff. Uh, his assumption is you would feel the way he would feel if he wasn't able to have an orgasm, which means basically he would feel like it was the end of the world. Okay. He doesn't understand. He cannot have the experience of the receptive experience in sex being satisfying without an orgasm. Okay. Women have that, men don't. And men don't even have any idea what that is. We you just know it exists. Okay. Right. So his thinking is, I've let you down hugely because I would feel let down. Exactly. And it doesn't. It doesn't I, yeah, but, do he, but he's 17. He has no experience with the fact that women have this other experience that sex can be satisfying without orgasm. Right. It's impossible. It's like incomprehensible to a man. So what do I say to him when he You gets tell like, him we're different. And, and tell me, it, you ever right. talk to us on Loveline? Oh, Adam, like Adam told to us. Yeah. Adam told you. Tell me Drew said said that. Okay. Tell me Ed Ed Crane Pool said uh, <laughs> it was that way. <laughs> All right, let's take a little break. Huh, buddy? Well, let's do. All right, I'm out. All right. Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's uh, Doctor Drew. Quiet, quiet. Yeah. Favorite song. I can't that. hear. I can't hear what you're talking. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, kid, good, buddy. More? Yeah. Right. Okay. Whew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Yeah. I'm out here in uh, Chicago, by mm -hmm. the way. What's up there, Drew? That's very exciting. Uh, thank you. Yeah. This Come is uh, Aaron nineteen. Aaron. Oh, hey, how you doing? We're good. Good. Yeah. Um, you ready for my problem? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, all right. Like, my girlfriend, right, like, we started having sex right now because she started, she just turned 18 and all. Yep. Yeah. And, like, while we're having sex, she's telling me that it really feels good and stuff, and I'm, uh, tell, like, I'm telling her that I'm about to ejaculate and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't want me to stop. She wants me to keep the same condom on because I, I want to go and change it to start fresh. But after I ejaculate, she, she wants me to keep it on, and I was just wondering if it was safe enough to keep it on. She wants you to sort of keep going and not break your stride. Is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't lose your erection after the after ejaculating? No, I don't. It's, I keep it up. Well, nice. It's, it's not safe. That's how condoms rip, and they can and they fall off too, and then the yeah. the content spills, and now you got a problem. Yeah, because that's what I keep on trying to tell her because we talk about it afterwards sometimes. Yeah. I'm telling her, you know, that, well, like... sounds like she I, needs to be get on the pill or something. Let's find some alternative means, maybe, for you guys. But do you think I should, like, like actually actually tell her, like, no to stop, and then actually go and, well, like, change it real fast and come yeah. back and, like, make it Adam, this is, again, the condom loader. I swear to God I have to get to work on that. Well, please. I'm putting in my schedule. Work on condom loader. I swear to God. So, do you want well, me to, like, well, sit down and talk to her and tell her that, like, we should start doing that and not have, have me, like, ejaculate in it and keep it on? You just stop and change it. Just okay. do that. All right. You don't have to sit and talk. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Get rid of Aaron, by the way. Yeah. We don't need our callers. No, no kidding. Uh, what is the chance that the condom's going to break after you ejaculate in it? Is it is it higher, or it's, is it just the fact that it's going to roll off? It's going to roll. It's going to slip off. That's the big thing. 
It's not so much to breakage. They, they, it could because it's moving more. There's more something. There's you know something in there. But you know it's the breaking that's really the big. Uh, the the uh, excuse me, the sliding off that's the big thing. Right. So he can keep his same boner and go get a new condom. Good times. Yeah, but look, if they're getting it on this frequently, uh, maybe it's time for her to get on the birth control pill. That's what I'm saying. That's what you're saying, Drew. Yeah. Hear my clicking? Yeah, what is that? That's me putting the condom loader on my schedule. All right. I'm going to hold my breath. All right. Here is uh, Lauren, 21. Hi. Um, my question is, last Saturday, I had an abortion. And on Wednesday, like, I um, had blood in my stool. I want to know if that's normal or... What? What do you think? I don't know because it's a lot of blood. Yeah, that would not be normal, right? And I went to the doctor on Thursday, and he said, oh, we'll just wait two weeks, and then we'll see. You sure it was in the stool, not just a vaginal discharge? It was inside of the stool. Like, it was actually you inside. Have, do you have any hemorrhoids? He looked inside of there, and he said there's a one that's micros microscopic. A small hemorrhoid. Yeah, so I don't know if that's... So that could be where the bleeding is coming from. Did they do any blood tests on you to make sure that you're... No, he said if it, in, within two weeks... If so, he'll have to do a camera test. Yeah, you need to, you need to have a scope done, for sure. Okay, because it also happened on Wednesday and Thursday, and then like I. All right. Well, go. It sounds like you should be taking some iron too, but they need to look up there and see why you're having this. That, that's what, not normal. What What might this be uh, to do with the abortion? Sometimes there can be clotting mechanism problems. Sometimes it can be. Uh, I can't think of any way it would really have anything to do with that other than the hemorrhoids. Uh, he he mentioned a microscopic I hemorrhoid. Don't think that's what he said. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Is there such a hemorrhoid that cannot be seen by the human mm, eye? No, no. They're internal or they're external. All right. Yeah. All right. Good times. This is uh, Chrissy. I like, I like the idea that she examined the core of her stool, though. <laughs> she actually got to the nougat part of the stool. You don't see chicks doing a lot of that work, you know what I mean? No, it's more of a guy thing, right? Eh? Stool dissection? <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, it's true. Yeah, hey, you're right. All right. Chrissy. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Okay, I had a question. I have, I'm 21, and I have a friend, Justin, and he's just now starting to date this girl who has herpes. I don't know. The name came out a little too, too oh, much. Oh, right. There. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that. You can't start throwing people's names around and then attaching venereal yeah. diseases to no, them. No, no. Screwballs. So look, this is either one of two scenarios. Either, either, either thing. She's got to be punished, right? Yep. One is sh this is bogus. Yeah. Two, she's just so stupid. She's saying herpes and a guy's name and yeah. who, who the guy's dating. Yeah. Either way, she's screwed. Yeah. I hang up on her. I'm afraid so. Okay, Vicky, nineteen. Uh, Hi, I said hang hi. up on her, Drew, not uh, destroy a satellite. Hi, guys. Um, What's that? Well, two weeks ago, I went to Vegas with my boyfriend, and um, mm. we got in a big argument. He was drunk, and he beat me. Well, he just started socking me. Wow. He started socking you? Wow. In front of his whole family, and, of course, I couldn't stay, you know, so I came in the bus, and... Uh, <laughs> And I hold on, hold on a second. He started beating you in front of his family? Yes, he did. And they held him back and everything. And it was a big old drama. Like, I was so embarrassed. You know, he had never done that before. But I don't know where it got into him. And now um, he wrote me an email apologizing. And he didn't even, like, you know. Well, here's the deal. Either, was, was he doing drugs that night? No. Drunk. Was he drunk? He was yeah. Drunk. Yeah, okay, so e either this is part of his alcoholism, and he really truly didn't know what he was doing, or he is a, a violent abuser. In either case, this is not going to get better, it's going to get worse, and you should stay away unless he is in some form of treatment. That's it, period. You do not go back to this, because it, it may stay quiet for a while, but it will get worse, guaranteed. Yeah, he promised me that, you know, he's not... Vicky? Uh-huh. It's going, he, I don't care what he, he says, promised, he promises. Drew. He promised. Yeah, it's going to get worse unless he is in treatment for quite a while. So just, you know, that that's it. That's the only condition to which you go back. Well, yeah. listen, a couple, couple things, too. Uh, the fact that, you know, she sort of made a distinction between, you know, slapping her or backhanding her and slugging her. Mm -hmm. I mean, sort of coming at her, both fists clinch and swinging. The family had to hold him back? No, number one. Number two, doing it in front of the family? <laughs> Excuse me, Mom. 
Got to put the uh, slap down on the old lady. You understand? Remember, uh-huh. remember what dad, remember what dad used to do to you? Yeah. yeah I'm gonna do the same thing now. There we go. Chip off the old block. Yeah, ridiculous. Oh, and she, you know, you know, she's coming right back too. Oh, she's it's building a case. She's building a case. Yeah. He said uh, he wouldn't do it again. I don't know why she asked us if she intends to go back already. All right. Huh? All right. Who's next? I'm looking here. This is uh, Melanie, 21. Melanie. <laughs> Melanie, 21, are you there? All right, Nikki. Nikki? Hello? Hi, what's up? Hey. Hey. Uh, my question is, just want to know if after a sex change operation, you could get an orgasm. Hmm. This is Nikki the chick? Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not a, a chick chick, you know? Yeah. You, you want to become a chick chick? Yeah. You're a male. You're a dude chick right now, right? Huh? Are you're you dude. You know, she's dude. Yeah, I look like he's a chick, though, guaranteed. Dude chick who wants to become <laughs> chick chick. Yeah. Dude chick bro. Chick bro, that's for sure. Pro. No, she's just she's she's just a she's just either a chick bro or a dude chick. I see. Uh oh. She wants to go chick chick. I don't want. Yeah, I want to be a chick chick. Yeah. And are you on medication? Yeah. And you don't get orgasms now. Well, I do. I just want to know after if, if I get the surgery, will I be able to get an orgasm? As far as I know, yeah. I don't think people would do that if they really couldn't. Uh, well, let me ask you this, Drew. Yeah. We always talk about the difference, you know, sort of in mechanics between men and women. Mm-hmm. And we know with a guy, like I said, guy, hook him, guy could be at a funeral of, uh, of his mother, put some peanut butter on his dork, have a... Have a dog lick it off and have an orgasm in the middle of the eulogy. I mean, yep, just yep. because of the pure physical sensation. Yes, right? and, and women, when you say that, don't hear it. They believe you're okay. you're, you're being funny. Right, no, you're but, not being funny. You're speaking the truth. Well, it's a little bit funny. It's funny the way you. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's yeah. funny scene, but but it, it, yeah, it's the clever. reality it's is clever. It's clever, it's clever, but it's real. It's a reality. Right now, women don't need the mechanical part so much. So much. Some, some do more than others, yeah. but it's a crapshoot. And yeah. some women, you know, psychologically, it can be very exciting. Like that caller we had earlier, just doing it in the car yeah. was exciting enough to give her an orgasm. Yes. But what happens when a guy becomes a chick? I know. I, I, I don't think the guy's going to get the chick mind and just be able to squeeze off those orgasms, you know, at the gym. No. You know what I mean? No, but yet they're on estrogen, so it's going to change. It's going to be different. <sighs> And what what do they what do they make the clitoris out of uh, like a Mike and Ike? What what do they do? I don't know. I, I, they cut the penis off, right? Shave it down, I think. What, what do you mean you shave it down? I don't know what the procedure is. I don't know. I don't. Is, do the, the, is the head of the penis become the clitoris? I imagine. You, you do imagine. So now you got a, a huge clitoris. I I, I don't know. Sure, look into that. Would you? I, I don't. Yeah. You don't want to look into it, do you? I know, because it, it, it hurts your teeth, right? That's right. Can any doctor who does that really claim they're a doctor? It, it, you know, these humanitarians, I don't know, they think they're doing the Lord's work by, by uh, taking uh, women that are trapped inside, or men that are trapped inside women's bodies, or women and trapped inside men's bodies. It's all BS. These are screwed up people. You ever, you ever met one of these transvestites that wasn't screwed up? No, nope, transsexuals. But, but I've met some that actually are happier as the other sex. All right. Be that as it may. So yeah. here is uh, Dale. Dale? Yes. What's going on, Dale? Hi. Um, I had a question. Um, I have um, been bulimic now for about maybe four years, and um, I have been wondering about if it affects you as far as if you wanted to have children, if it affects you that way. Yep. Definitely. It, not definitely, but it can. It can. Um, you, you can in get in you, what way? Well, is it, is for it depleting your body of nutrients, or obviously, if your body's struggling to survive, its ability to handle another system is extremely unlikely. Right. You wouldn't. You right. Would, neither of you would survive that. A. So obviously, the, the your body adjusts by making it more difficult for that to happen, and one of the ways it does is by causing premature ovarian failure, for instance. Is there any and it gives you, makes you lose or, your. Was there what? Is there any like type of a sign that I, I would notice, or would there mm. be like irregular periods or anything like that? You might lose your period, but it, it, it's hard to diagnose this in the middle of bulimia because usually you lose your period anyway. 
Right. So anyway, right. you're 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 this. You're you're messing with not only your reproductive potential, but your survival. So. Well, right. I mean, this is something obviously that I want to quit doing. Um, I I just I, I guess I'm under the impression that I can just like stop, and that I just want to know if there's going to well, be like that, long term effects. Or... You're wrong. It's a chronic illness and needs treatment. People right. people don't just stop it. Right, because it's more mental. If you're not in treatment, you're in danger. Okay. Okay? All so right. if, if fertility is that important to you, that it motivates you to get help, then go do that because that's important. i tell you, this uh, eating disorder, it really does to the lay person seem like something you could stop. Yeah, I know. But uh, and from doing this show, I've learned that it uh, gets a grip on these girls about as tight as, uh, you know, like heroin on guys. Any other addiction. Or girls. Yeah, yeah. any other addiction. Yeah. I mean, it's really weird because it's like, just don't throw up, all right, sweet pants? You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Don't engage in this horrible, horrible behavior that, you know, us, us people with uh, out of eating disorder do uh, once every three years, and it's the worst ten seconds of our life. Just stop doing that. It's easy. Mm-hmm. And yet, they can't seem to do it. It's like telling an alcoholic, stop drinking, or a heroin addict, stop using drugs. Look what's happening to you. Can't you see it? Yeah, but. I know, but booze is so good, Drew. I know, Ed. I've been talking to you about it for a long time. Oh, sweet, sweet booze. The cigarette, I like the new cigarette commercials. That, that has all, You've seen this, where they talk, have <laughs> these sort of quotes from people. I, I swear, everything I've heard come out of your mouth, they... they put on the air on the screen there which is i only smoke at night i only smoke on the weekends i only smoke after mm -hmm. dinner i only smoke two cigarettes i'm not a smoker and it says uh, if you smoke you're a smoker yeah. yeah well no that's uh hey it's 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 no different than uh, eating uh, donuts or chili fries if you have uh, one a day or or if you eat a, a thousand buckets of chili fries and donuts every day. No different. You're still a donut eater. Still a chili fry eater. Right, Drew? You're a doctor. Same. 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 No different. No, no different. <laughs> this, is, this is how doctors work. You smoke three cigarettes a day, you smoke three packs a day. Doesn't matter. You're a smoker. And I, again, I say, use the cheeseburger analogy. Exactly the same thing, right? One is the same as a hundred. It's a yeah, little I, bit more like a dose of a, like a, po a toxin or a poison, it's like, ra rather than because it's like a little bit. Yeah, right, you might get by, might not. All right, might not. But the cheeseburger and stuff, you're, you're gonna get by. You will. Well, uh, no different. One in a thousand. All right, let's take a break. Let's do. Hey, buddy, love line. I'm Adam. That's Doctor Drew. Back to the phones. What do you say, buddy? As soon as I'm done listening. All right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always up and down. Interesting. Yep. It's true. Right. Line two is uh, ringing, not blinking here, guys. Let's go to uh, John. It's 25. Hey, guys. W what's happening? What's happening, John? Hey. All right. Check it out. I fell asleep while I was getting a BJ from my, my girl, and she is mm -hmm. pissed. Yeah. Were you drunk? No. Whoa! I was tired. Oh, my God! Somebody <laughs> hold the phones! I can't believe that! We need them back, too, Ann. Yeah. I see Pete. Insane clown posse. Yeah. Uh, you're tired. Uh, guys do this. Oh, man. She's just irate. Yeah, all right. Well, tell her to get over it. I mean, really. What do I say? All right. Now it's bogus. Yeah. It just sounds bogus. It's yeah. really not. Well, what, what, okay. what have you said? I'm sorry. And what does she say? She's pissing up and she's pissed. How long ago did this happen? Not. How long ago? Okay. How long? About two months or so ago. And she okay, has. She's she still has, pissed. Still pissed? Oh, yeah. All right, well, I over. dump her. There you dump done. her. It's, it's over. That is a bogus okay. call. Yeah, yeah, he's an idiot. Come on. Two months ago. <laughs> still pissed. Okay, this is uh, Jared, 20. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. Hey, um, I got a question. I, uh,. I've been with my girlfriend about six months right now, and um, we have a pretty active sex life, except like a quarter of the time um, is like the only time I can really maintain an erection. Most of the other times we get going and I just kind of peter out after about like 10 minutes or so. Did you say a quarter of the time? Yeah, that's what, well, no, it's, it's actually like a quarter of the time is the only time I can like keep going the entire way. Okay, Drew, let me just get this straight. A quarter of the time is the only time he can keep going all the way. 
Correct. Yeah. Is, that what he, is that what he said? So, yeah, so three it. quarters of the time you lose your erection. Right. How, okay. How long into it? Uh, like 10, 15 minutes, depending on what's going on. Then no, no ejaculation, just you lose your erection. Right. Are you on a minute? Well, first of all, 15 minutes is pretty good. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, the other times it, it's like nothing. Like, it's not that hard. I don't know why this is because with past girlfriends I've had, I didn't really have this issue. And it's not like we're doing anything that's boring. We're, we're pretty active. We do a lot of different Hang things. Hang on a second. 15 minutes depending what's going on? What does that yeah. mean? Well, like, sometimes just depending on the mood we're in, we know, switch positions, stuff like that. And if you... Adam, are you, are you, are you following this? Yeah, sort of. I'm only a quarter interested in this call. Are you on medication? No, nothing. Okay, there's some something going on here that's, uh, I mean, Drew, I don't think you've been saying the age of these uh, gents. Well, I'm guessing he's a young man. Uh, if at age 20, you're having trouble keeping it up most of the time with your young girlfriend, and you're not on any medications or anything, there's a, something going on. Seriously? Are you, are you anxious? Nervous? Uh, I, I'm not sure because I don't feel any different than with the other girlfriends I've been with, and I haven't had any any issues like this with them. Anything else going on in your life right now? Are you sleeping okay? Are they stress in your life? Yeah, stress, but I mean, it. I, I guess that could be it, but it, the stress has only been for the past couple months, and it's kind of been this way for the past, like, four or five months. And what's the stress from? Uh, a lot of issues with, like, work, and I, I do some volunteer work, and that's really kind of going crappy right now. Are you? Do you do drugs? No, 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 no drugs. Or anything. Hold on. How, how badly could volunteer work go? <laughs> Give me a worst um, case scenario. You quit. I well. You don't get that uh, big nothing paycheck every month. Actually, what it is is um, I volunteer with the police department, and I uh, I've been implicated in something that happened that I didn't do, and I have to go testify to court. And it's kind of a big deal when you're only 20 and you haven't done anything wrong, and it can potentially screw your entire career. All right, that, that could weigh on you. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I don't know if there's a, a good answer here. I mean, uh, maybe he should get a medical evaluation. Yeah, for sure he should, because that's that's always a possibility. But he goes for 15 minutes. Uh, uh, but who knows what his version of 15 minutes is? Yeah, you know. That, and he certainly has plenty of stress in his life now to uh, cause this. I wonder if whatever had happened. Hmm. When when did this thing happen that was so horrible? Or this thing that you're being tried for or oh, called no, up in court? Oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not being tried for anything. It's just somebody told me something about. All right. Something. When when did it happen? Uh, like March. So it's like, like five months ago. Right, but n nothing happened with it until like April, like late April, early May. Was was it way in your mind or anything? Not really. Okay. I didn't even really All think right. about it. I didn't think. Forget anything. it. All right. All right. Yeah, listen, 20-year-old guy can't keep the boner going most of the time. Yeah. I think might have to go in and get an evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes you just get an evaluation to find out nothing's wrong. Absolutely. I mean, and, and then you go back home and you realize there's nothing wring with you, and then maybe you get it up next time. He basically needs to have a thyroid function, prolactin level, make sure that things, the blood supply is normal, that there's other, the prostate's okay. Just make sure they got to yeah, take, take the gay aptitude test. Melanie, 21. Melanie? Hello? Hi, what's up? Thanks for taking my call. Um, Thank you. Kind of a two-part <laughs> question. Um, my boyfriend smokes a lot of pot. Um, he's really dedicated to school. He graduated college with like a 3.89, but he's not responsible as far as with me. Like, he's really forgetful. He's kind of immature, and that's kind of the second part of my question. You always hear that uh, guys mature slower than girls do. And I want to know if his forgetfulness, the irresponsibility, is that something that I can wait for to change, or is it something that I... Well, how whoa, 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 whoa. How, how much pot is he smoking? Um, several times a day. All right, so this could all be... One of the things that pot does is arrest your development. If you started smoking when he was 14, you basically have a 14-year-old you're dealing with now. Secondly, it can screw with your motivation, and so you can not want to do things and forget to do things. So this so whole... It's not strange that he can graduate with a 3.89 and get into law school. And absolutely, he abs ab light bulbs. absolutely not. That the, it really does not affect cognitive performance. Amazingly, it affects memory and usually sort of uh, procedural memory. So it's you forget where you put your car keys and things like that. But learning tends to be okay. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so for- even though he says he wants to put so much effort into school, and then he says he wants to put effort into our relationship, it doesn't carry over? Or No, this this is a different kind of effort. This is trying to remember to do the procedural things associated with a relationship that he can't remember to do or doesn't have the motivation to do. Okay. So if he stops, will he start he will get together? He will get very depressed for about three months, and uh-huh. things will get worse for a while, and then it will get better. If okay. then he's still a problem, if he's still not, he's just not a good caretaking person. I mean, some people are not available in relationships. They don't take your feelings really into account properly. Okay. Yeah. And okay. he's not, he, you can expect him to change in, you know, over the course of the next 12 to 14 years. <laughs> yeah, but in terms of maturity. I know you're looking for the next uh, six weeks, maybe uh, two months. That, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Good luck. All right. Thanks. Yeah. And listen, uh, ladies, uh, 21, 22-year-old guys, uh, they're, they're guys. They're not men. He, you know? I mean, Drew, look at, look, back, look at yourself when you're 22. Yeah. But you're, 20, you're ready 20, for anything. 24, 25, you're, you're pretty much there, though. Well, you start getting it together, but, I mean, you, you really, in terms of being how a woman wants you to be in a relationship. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that no. stuff ain't happening no. at 22. No, no way. Break time again. All right, Drew, why don't you uh, wrap it up for me, would you, buddy? Should I try calling you later, or are we done? You can call me on my cell. All right, good times. All right, good times. Don't turn that down. Someday, I swear to God, I'm going to figure out what the F they are saying. I swear to God. I'm going to take it and slow it down or something. I'll figure it out. Oh, I love that stuff. Coming up later this week, Carrie Kasem. I guess that'll be tomorrow. And then uh, Brooke Burns, not to be confused with Brooke Burke, who will be on the following night. So we have Brooke Burns after Carrie Kasem. Brooke Burns, you know, from Dog Eat Dog. As Adam described her, smoking hot. And then Brooke Burke. She has a new show coming up, or is it just... She's from the Wild Out, isn't she? She's still doing the Wild Out stuff. And Adam will be back from Chicago hopefully tomorrow morning. So until tomorrow, this is Dr. Drew on behalf of Adam Carolla saying mahalo. What do they What do they make the clitoris out of? Uh, like a Mike and Ike? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.